Walking in wisdom, part two. Our God is a God of wisdom. He created the entire world by wisdom. In Proverbs 3, verse 19, said, The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. And by understanding, he had established the heavens. God is the only wise God. So good at giving back to foolish children. Because like beget like. If God, your father, is the only wise God, then you're also a wise child. If you're born again. So stupidity is an anatomy in the kingdom of God. If God, your father, is a wise God, then you could have, you must have given back to us a wise children. Because like beget like. Then what is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to perceive the true nature of things and to implement the will of God. Wisdom is the ability to perceive the true nature of things and to implement the will of God consigning it in order to get the result desired. Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it at the right time. It's not just knowing what to do and doing it. Knowing what to do and doing it at the right time. You can know what to do and do it at the wrong time. It is knowing what to do and doing it what? Are you getting me, sir? If a wife and husband is quarreling and there's a time the woman was to say sorry, that would have ended the quarrel. She did not say it. If you say the son after it may have caused some damages. There's a time she would have just said sorry and the man may not talk again. And the man to tell her sorry and probably will not decrease again. But he may say the sorry at the wrong time when it has caused a lot of damage. It is not just doing the right thing, but doing it at what? Right time. There's a time to pray. And you don't pray. When you may pray, you may be prayer, but you may pray at the wrong time. It is the correct application of knowledge. And Mike Mudo put this, I think that's his own He said, wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. That's Mike Mudo's definition. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. He that hear these sayings of mine and do them can be likened unto a wise man. Matthew 7, 24. If you read down to 28. He said the wind came, the storm came. I mean, it had no effect on them. You heard the testimony? Of the lady who testified that her first child was SS and turned AA, and the word that's a pastor's wife. It's a pastor's wife. The pastor is here in Biasa. Their first child was sickle cell SS. They were a pastor of another church, and but submit to this ministry. And the child was SS. Prayed for it, turned what? AA with medical proof. And the rest, word that was lived that every other child will be AA. So they are four in number, all A. You like that? Yes, Whatever is against you, we turn today. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Wisdom is the enrichment of your head that puts you ahead of other heads. Wisdom is the enrichment of your head that puts you ahead of other heads. God enriched this your head. It puts you to be ahead of other people's brains. That's wisdom. That's what? Knowledge is information. Understanding is analysis. And wisdom is application. If you know something and you don't know how to apply it, you are not wise. You only have information. That's why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs 4 verse 7. And with all you're getting, get what? What is it?
So if it's the principal thing, they must give the principal attention. People are detained and stagnated in life because they are not detailed in applying the principles and knowledge of God's word in their life affairs. Now, there are four kinds of wisdom. We have four kinds of wisdom. If you read the book of James 3, 15 and 17, we have four kinds of what? Wisdom. We have earthly wisdom, devilish wisdom, sexual wisdom, and then divine wisdom. These four kinds of wisdom, they have their different rules. Earthly wisdom, which is the natural, what you call common sense. It is called what? Common sense, available to everybody. That's called earthly wisdom. You don't need to tell a child where the mother's breast is. Once you born a child, have you ever discovered that the child does not take the mouth to her nose? Nobody teaches the child. The child is like, hey. <laughs> Who told him or her the breast is somewhere? Wisdom. You will see a child sit with the head. They sit with the putters. Who told them? Wisdom. It is called common sense. No child takes food and put here. They put it to the mouth. Even if it's wrong. Drew, it is called common sense. It's available to everybody. Once you are born to the world, it's available. Then we have sexual wisdom. S-E-N-S-U-A-L, wisdom. It is also called intellectual wisdom. It is acquired through formal or informal learning. You go to school, you, have, you acquire a degree in biology, you acquire a degree in chemistry, you acquire a degree in engineering. It is called intellectual wisdom where you go to school and then acquire a degree. Then we have devilish wisdom. It is satanic and diabolic. It has its source in magic and witchcraft. That's the one they all call people of praise with. Then we have the fourth wisdom, which is called divine wisdom. It is superior to all kinds of wisdom. It is from above, and whatever is above is above all. John 3 31. We are talking about this wisdom in the one we are teaching, the divine wisdom. It provides solutions to the challenges of life. It can take you from the bottom to the top. It makes an ordinary man an extraordinary person. It puts you ahead of others. It is this wisdom that makes you gain flight in the affairs of life. Jesus demonstrated that intellectualism at its best can make you an orator. But divine wisdom makes you an oracle. An orator is like a motivational speaker. That's the orator wisdom. When they talk, you clap. <laughs> Yet nothing happens. But when you walk in the wisdom of God, the same thing you say with them, miracles happen. That's why most times we teach the same things, but we don't get the same results. People can teach success, but they don't get the results we get. Because a man can teach success and tell you, work hard. But I can say now, walk ahead, and then as you step out, doors open. They are not the same. They are not what? They are not the same. Now, the church of Jesus Christ, for instance, have two operational characteristics that many settle for one and ignore the other. If you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, you find that, that the Bible said, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and what? When you are born again, there are two things that you get automatically. Power and what? Wisdom. But people go for power. An average Christian will tell you, I want to cast out demons. Power is 50%. Wisdom is 50%. If you only acquire power without wisdom, you will drive all the demons and be useless. And that is what many have. Power gives you ability. Wisdom gives you stability. That's why you see people who cast out the devil, yet they go back begging. They have the power to say, devil, go! But they don't have the ability 
and the understanding to create wealth. They write exam and they fail. But from this day, wisdom will answer to you. Yeah. It is what will guarantee your durability as a child of God. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the times. Isaiah 33 verse 6. Let me tell you this. You can't last beyond the level of wisdom in you. He said, by me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Proverbs 8, 12 and 15. Say, wisdom dwell with prudence and find out with knowledge of witty inventions. By me, kings what? If you want to reign, it's not by political appointment, it's by wisdom. <laughs> by what? He said, by me, kings and he has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign where? On the earth. Every man you see in this kingdom reigning has the wisdom of God. People think it's by appointment they reign. I said something humorously. I don't know the president of China. I don't know his name. But is there anybody who doesn't know Bill Gates? So you don't have to be president to be known. The president of the most populated nation on earth. I don't think even you now, if they call you for exam, say, what is the president's name of that? You will know. True? So it is not office that makes people reign. So I don't think that if, I, if I'm the president, to ask your children the name of three presidents of Nigeria past, they will not remember. Far, too far. Ask them. Two presidents behind. They say, uh, Mommy, which one? <laughs> but ask your children, do you know Abraham? They will laugh. Do you know Isaac? They will laugh. Do you know David? They will laugh. By me, kings. It's right here. <laughs> you will read. I will tell you certain values that comes with divine wisdom. Values that come with divine wisdom. So you really take time to acquire it. You know, people play down on wisdom. You can't hear people teach on wisdom. They can teach power, 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 power to cast out demons, witches and wizards, kill them and bury them. All manner of program. No more witch. All witches fly from a pipe bomb and go off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But after you put this fly, you want to go and drive bicycle. No, now. You should move from bicycle to car. Life story. A young man was coming to cut my hair constantly. And one day I said, how did you come? He said, bicycle. I said, in Padako, you're using bicycle? Not this past bicycle, though. That's what they used to go to farm in Gokana. <laughs> You know, bicycle has grace. Bicycle has, there's a bicycle that's for pleasure. This one is the one they used to go to farm. I said, excuse me, why are you using that farm bicycle? You know the type that has one thing in front so they can put platinum bunch on top? <laughs> I don't mean the you know, bicycle, there are some bicycles that are more expensive than cars in, the, in Europe. This one is the type that is poverty bicycle. It's not a, that they have one kind of thing they construct at the back to carry bag of gare and then they put one thing in front. I said, come. <laughs> I said, he said that uh, if there's goes through, he can maneuver. I said, my friend, <laughs> why not have car and maneuver than bicycle? <laughs> then one day, he came I said, they stole the bicycle. <laughs> I said, may you never see it. <laughs> I said, they pray for people to recover something. Me, I pray, don't recover this one. <laughs> I said, how can you be coming to cut my hair? And then you are driving, you are coming down here with bicycle. I said, but you never see that bicycle. <laughs> he has cast out all the demons, but was riding. 
<laughs> because we don't value wisdom. We don't value what? Wisdom. People, if you say power. <laughs> Do you know all the witches in my village, they died? Nothing bad. But after they died, <laughs> you are still living in a touch house. <laughs> no, that's not that. There should be a balance. There should be a, there should be a balance. When you have operating power, also operating wisdom. There should be a balance. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number one. Values that comes with what? Divine wisdom. Number one, guarantees you authority. It guarantees you authority. Divine wisdom puts in command of the challenges of life. Look at the man Joseph. He was lifted to the place of authority by divine wisdom. Pharaoh literally surrendered the throne to Joseph. When Joseph displayed wisdom... It was not dream that put him on the throne. It was wisdom. If all Joseph did was to interpret dream, he would have remained as a head of the sorcerers. It was when he told Pharaoh how he could preserve food, he said, no one as wise as you are. He didn't say nobody can interpret dream as you are. He said, there's no one as wise and discreet. You have so much wisdom ruling here. May wisdom make you the next ruler. Yeah. Let your amen be strong. Yeah. If you read Genesis 41, 38 to 46, when you get home, you read. When the man Stephen was talking, Stephen virtually summarized the whole Old Testament in one city. In Acts chapter 6. In verse 10, he said, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. He spoke to a point and said, ah, who is this? He summarized the whole Old Testament at one glance. Say wisdom. Daniel took over Babylon by wisdom. You will take over. Yeah. From today, you will rule and reign wherever you appear in the name of Jesus. He said, by me, kings reign. Proverbs 8, 15. And princes decree justice. When you operate in the wisdom of God, anywhere you go, nobody can ignore you. Are you hearing me, sir? It will distinguish you. It will announce you. Stop lobbying. Ask for wisdom. Stop what? Ask for. <laughs> when you are praying in wisdom, it is irrelevant whether the man is a Muslim or not. Stop lobbying. Go for wisdom. Because in your office, they can't ignore you. When problem, I come to Anaja Koloka, when jungle match up, they say, call that man. Call that woman. She will tell you what to do. Because every man in the palace has a problem. All they need is the wisdom of God. Stop lobbying. Go for what? He said, by me, kings reign. Not by lobbying. Not by, look, even if I wasn't a pastor, you can, you can imagine if I was a politician, who would have been the first minister of Niger Delta? It would have been me, no, no contention. They would say, give it to him, give it to him. He has all the answer of Niger Delta. Because that time when I said there was no ministry, they would say, at first, I will be lobbied. I will just say that. The president will say, if you give that person as of assembly, you'll be in trouble. Give him. Are, that's why Christians should go for wisdom. We keep praying and fasting, yet nobody asks for wisdom. In fact, if you're teaching wisdom, they, think they see you're wasting time. They say, why is you teaching wisdom, chef? You know, go come. You no, know, come. Make, make everybody fall down. If you fall down and get up, which is good, won't you have something to show? <laughs> After you fall down, fall down and die and get up back, <laughs> you won't die in Jesus' name. Yeah. Even if you fall and die, fall and die, and then you get up. Life story, a small boy went to America and he didn't know where they were praying. They fall and die. He said, Mommy, what is that? Fall and die, fall and die. How they say? Fall and die, fall and die. Small American boy, small boy. Like what they told me, I laughed. What say? Mommy, what were you saying? They fall and die, fall and die. What, fall and die, what? Who won't die here? <laughs> <laughs> he said, hey, should people should die, die. Who won't die, die here? Yeah. What does it mean by fall and die? Fall and die. 
Even if you fall and die, won't you get up and, and leave? <laughs> Number two, you won't die in Jesus' name. Yeah. It guarantees longevity. It guarantees what? Longevity. Wisdom guarantees long life. It guarantees what? When you are prayed in the wisdom of God, you don't endanger your health in the name of enjoyment. You will know how to live your life so you can live long. Now, when a man carries a cigarette, they say, this is dangerous to your health. The man still smokes. What does he lack? Wisdom. wisdom. He lacks wisdom. He knows that that cigarette will cause him problems. He says, hey, do you know doctors smoke? Doctors smoke. Doctors smoke. Who know the implication of cigarette? They smoke. So maybe take banner. You know what's banner? India hemp. By the time a doctor takes it in their hand, what does it lack? Wisdom. He's not the devil. A man sniffing cocaine in his late 50s, he's not the devil after him. He lacks what? Wisdom. Because, listen, do you know even alcohol and illicit drugs, when a man is 20, he has energy. When 30, he has energy. At 50, his natural body is weakened. That's why people who are into drugs at 50, they die quick. Because the body system is already getting old. So if it takes 15 wraps at 20, it takes 15 wraps at 50, it's already close to dead. <laughs> because his physical body can't carry him. That's why when you see people take alcohol and they're getting old, it kills them quick. Because at that time, even the body system is getting weak. It can't carry what carried him when he was 20. So some of them will still want to do what they were doing when they were young. He said, well, I used to smoke 15 raps. He was 20. Now he's 58. 15 raps will reduce 15 years. <laughs> he lags. Is it the devil? No. Oh. Wise people know how to live their life. You know a particular food is affecting you. Do you need any prayer? You stop the food even from eating it. True? He said, length of days is in our right hand. Look at it. Proverbs 3 verse 16. Length of days are what? Where is long life? Where is long life? It's only some. For time's sake, let me just take them. Number three, it guarantees you wealth. Guarantees you wealth. Guarantees you what? Wealth. Wealth is a product of wisdom. <laughs> he says, riches. He says, Proverbs 3, verse 16. He says, Length of this is in our right hand, and in our left hand, riches and wealth. So, where's money? Where's money? Where's money? But why are you looking for this somewhere else? Now, where's money? It's in wisdom. It's not in the country, it's in wisdom. Our God is the wisest and the wealthiest God. Every wise man is a rich man. Now, how you know that wisdom is so powerful? Look at the men's, for instance, Solomon. The first thing Solomon asked for what? Let me say this today, with all humility. If you don't ask for wisdom before you get wealth, you'll be broke. Every man that gets money before wisdom, they're always broke. If you get wisdom, money comes, you know how to sustain it. Wealth is a byproduct of wisdom. The money you're looking, this church got money not by connection, but by what? Boy, this church got money by wisdom. I became rich by wisdom. Not by where I know. Not by what? I'm privileged to pray for people of all kinds. But I, I've never won the curtain of to say, let me go and see this person who I prayed for. Not one day. I get what I'm saying now? All the people I prayed for, I said, let me get up. Let me go and see this person who I prayed for so that uh, I can get some dough. A wise man, he don't move anyhow. He stay where you are and then the people come looking for you. They will look for you. Amen. So I hear the wealthiest in this generation will emerge as I'm speaking now. 
Solomon encountered wisdom and it was so wealthy. So what? I think something on Sunday. <laughs> Hi. About eternal life, I'm going to go somewhere. It, it guarantees, number four, it guarantees you answers. It guarantees you what? Answers. Divine wisdom brings answers to probing questions of life. In 1 Kings chapter 10, 1 to 7, the Solomon, a woman called the Queen of Sheba, came to him. And when she saw the wisdom he displayed, <laughs> she said, the things I heard are not even half of what was told me. You have so much, so much beyond what was told me. Solomon was just teaching answers to all. He said, wow. I was teaching in America and I quoted a scripture where Solomon, what he eats in a day. In a day, what Solomon, they eat in one day in his palace. It's some people's food for 20 years. That man was rich. And he said, greater than Solomon is here. You know, we are richer than him. How many know that? You believe the word of God? You'll be richer. Yeah. When you're praying in divine wisdom, when someone comes asking you a question, the answer comes readily. Comes what? It's available supernaturally. You don't struggle to answer. When, when you're praying, some people came to me and said, um, that church should not get involved in Oakman. And we are not really involved in Oakman. But the, immediately the Spirit of God gave me an answer. And the people talking to me are professionals. Very tough. Look, operating wisdom, otherwise, the people can trap you. That's what nobody could trap you. I now ask uh, who appoints the VC of Uniport? They say, well, we have a council. As I said, the truth, who appoints him? After your council, who gives the final appointment? Is the federal government? I said, okay. As who appoints the VC of UST? The U.S. government. I said, why? Because they finance the schools. So who do you think should appoint the person of Oakman? <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's impossible for a man who is financing a system, he says he should separate himself when he brings the money. How can salvation be bring money? I said, we don't have a say in Oakman. The story ended. Say wisdom. I didn't go argue with the professionals, but I say, even in your school where you are teaching, it is federal government that appoints your VC. <laughs> because they are the ones giving you the money. You can't say federal government don't have a say in your VC. It's not possible. They have a say because they give you the money. You can't give the money and say you don't have a say. Where have you seen that kind of thing? You can select your people, but they will put the final stamp. We give you money. And they can sack the man any day. <laughs> If he misbehaves. I didn't go argue, you know. I only gave it back. Jesus, he said, Master, this man committed adultery. He said, Have you seen where a woman committed adultery with that man? <laughs> he didn't say, Oh, the law. He said, If there be any of you, because you know those were the customers. For them to know that she committed adultery, they too they have gone there. So they say, okay, any of you who have not committed this sin, throw the first stone on her. They say, wow, this man knows that we are our customers. We let's better go. <laughs> say wisdom. They say, but this power you're pretty with, where is it from? <laughs> he said, if I tell you something, would not be there. He said, the power of John the Baptist. Where do you say it came from? They say, we don't know. He said, me too, I don't know. When you operate in the wisdom of God, you will always have answers to the questions of life. May God today make you a solution. Yeah. The Holy Ghost shall teach you in Luke 12, verse 12. He said, The Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you shall ought to say. This next answer that will bring peace, that will bring direction, solution, joy in your business, in that company where you're working. In your family and career, even in ministry, you will be the one that will give the answer in the name of Jesus. Amen. When there was a challenge at the cathedral, I've shared that before. 
I, it's not school. Listen, I know I took one year to ask for wisdom. And before we round up this month, my greatest secret is wisdom. The end of this month, there'll be an impartation of wisdom. Where you will see. I love it because I saw Bishop when, when you see, watch. Our devil is, if not the wisest today, as preachers. If you want the other, Oyedo Bo is very wise. It's not school, oh. Not school, oh. Our devil's level of wisdom is surpassing. What Redeem is doing, he learned it from somebody. Redeem was not the first church to plant churches like this. I won't call you that church. There was a church in this country where their book is in my library was the first church to spread in this nation. Lydia was not the first. But they were very dogmatic. Young people don't like going to that church because they were so rigid. Till today. So young people don't go. If you go there, you see only old, old people. The young people don't like because they were so rigid. And then a wise man took the same knowledge. He, he does holiness like that same church. But said, younger people can't behave like us. You can't tell young people to cover hair, not wear earrings. It's not possible. So as a wise man, we we not wear earrings. We preach holiness, but allow the young people to dress as they want, but with the fear of God, and have their own parishes. Church exploded. And the team overtook that church. Say wisdom. The same thing, but one we was wiser than the other. Hello. And Oedekbo came from that lineage of wisdom. And uh, if you look, it's me that. <laughs> I am not the strongest pastor, but I have profound results. <laughs> By what? Wisdom. And you are coming from that same genealogy. <laughs> True? Have you seen where a baby elephant prayed to be big? This day, may the genes that flow in this family tree rest on you in the name of Jesus. The spirit of wisdom that flows in this lineage rest on you in the name of Jesus. There is a wisdom lineage we belong to in Christ. It flows from it. This, if you see this family, we don't do normal things. Check. Check at the boy, check with the boy, check me. You can see extraordinary results, true? Somebody humorously met me and said, This is why you're succeeding, is because that's he was joking or not that. He said, You yeah, are the first reverse, my always behaving like a Yorubans. He was joking. He said, because it's only Yoruba people who do be big things in gospel. So you, you are behaving like them. He was just making humor out of life. You know? I, this I'm from Yoruba. <laughs> <laughs> but he was just making a yoke. He was just, what? A yoke. He was not yoking. Not so? Okay. When they were building the cathedral, something happened. I've shared this testimony before. They came with the design and the whole cathedral was pillar, 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 pillar. As architect. How will people see with these pillars? And it was right. They said, well, structural engineer said we have to put the pillars because the gallery is so long that without these pillars, it won't stand. I say, ah. What do we do? He said, nothing. Structurally, we have to put the pillars. And he was right. Because the length of the gallery was long. So there's no way we can run that length without pillars. I said, hold on. I said, hold on. I consulted all the architects. They said nothing. Consulted all the structural engineers. They said nothing. I said, hold on. Don't go further. I went to the closest. I said, Le Kitali in there. There must be an answer. These pillars can't be like this. He said, Now, this is what you should tell them. 
put part of the gallery outside and put part inside the same length. Then take the pillars outside. The inside, it will be short as a gallery. The pillars will not come. I say, architect, come. Now, let me explain what I mean. This was how it was inside. Are you seeing my hand? All this is inside. Now, I said they should put it this way. Take this path outside. Put the pillars from here down. So, this length is not long again. So, don't let the, they don't need to put pillars. So, the wall will stop here. The pillars are outside. But if you come inside, the gallery is all the same. I don't know whether I put to explain to you. <laughs> when I explained to the architect, he said, wow. I said, so don't put the wall here. Put the wall halfway so the pillars become outside. So inside, no pillar. Which school taught me? Which school? <laughs> Never read architecture in my life. Never read civil engineering in my life. That same wisdom answers to you now. Yeah. Wisdom is the secret to man's problems. Solution to man's what? Problems. Finally, number five. Guarantees you exploits. Guarantees you what? The wisdom of God generates exploits and mighty works. And Matthew 13, 54, he said, Whence has this man this wisdom and this mighty works? Mighty. They are direct product of divine wisdom. When divine wisdom is at work in you, your results are undeniable. Your results are what? If you look at this commission, for instance, look at the wealth, medical science and wonders. They are, now listen. Wisdom is very powerful. I used to shout for somebody to get healed. In Jesus! In Jesus! By second service, even me will know I'm tired. <laughs> when I finish service to climb up, it's another walk. I say, if I do like this, I'll die quick. <laughs> I'll shout like this. For one fever to go, Satan, go! Go, fever! I said, no. <laughs> this is not wisdom. This is not what? Wisdom. And then I asked God, which simple way? <laughs> Because I saw Jesus Christ went to a man and said, take your bed. And, yeah. I said, it's that simple. Take your bed and go. And the man got up and left. He said, take your bed. Go. Go. Now. <laughs> so I said, I want to live long. I like this time than the one I was doing before. Wisdom. And now with all humility, you see people get healed without me turning my stomach upside down. <laughs> Say wisdom. wisdom. How can God be building the cathedral dead free? Dead what? Free. The same time, side by side, we are building the Sunday school. Now, our Sunday school is not two by four school. That school. When you go there, you will see that this is a, a a class in three weeks, they are decking. If you don't have money, will it be taken in three weeks? By the time they lay one block, they will come and calculate. Calculate. Committee will meet. Upon committee, without commitment, they will commit crime. <laughs> <laughs> we are buying properties. The same life story, a, a, a very senior man in a church. I won't call the church one of the biggest, the first Pentecostal church, about the first one of the biggest Pentecostal that came to Nigeria. He says, Sal, somebody called me and asked me that these properties people are buying, are you people owing? Or do you people pay cash? He said, the man was very serious. He said, do they pay cash or they owe? He said, he told the man, he said, if they don't owe, they pay. He said, are you sure? All these things they are buying every day, we're seeing, where they pay. They don't owe bank loan. Say, what's up? How can it be built? God will build it up. As, you know, most of you as other churches are building also. Say wisdom. Is anybody under pressure here? I'm under, do I look like we're under pressure? Say wisdom. I've not seen where some people are building. The whole church will feel it. Even to come to church, you'll be afraid. <laughs> because as you're coming, they'll drop five offering buckets. First bucket for foundation, 
second bucket for Lite, third bucket for pastors traveling, fourth bucket for the wife rapper, third bucket. <laughs> so you change money to five different notes. He said, look, we'll take five offerings today. So take time. If it's 500, I change it 100, 100, 100. So when they say, now offering for foundation, you drop that one. He says, they will have a second offering, they will take oh, be ready. So <laughs> yeah, it's one time offering. If you like, you give. If you don't like, you carry your money and go. Not your business. Say wisdom. And guarantees you what? Yes, please. After today, nobody will say it is me that is making you. God, who is the maker, will lift you. No devil will corrupt the wisdom of God in your life. In the name of Jesus. But the source of wisdom is the fear of God. Let me close on this note. Have the fear of God and seek the help of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom will work in your life. Have the what? And seek the help of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 9 verse 10 and I close. It said the fear of God. Proverbs 9 10. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy. Listen, when you read that scripture, many don't understand. They only go with fear, but don't have knowledge of the Holy Spirit. So they are limited in wisdom. When you have fear of God, Joseph feared God and had knowledge of the Holy Spirit. That's why he could know how to preserve food. There are many people who don't commit sin, but are stupid. If you want to walk in wisdom, when you have the fear of God, you must also know how to relate to the Holy Spirit because he's the custodian of wisdom. Many stop in only the first part of wisdom. They don't commit sin, but don't know how to connect with the Holy Spirit. So they are sinless, but full of poverty. The fear of God is the beginning. It didn't say it's the end. Read Bible well. That is where wisdom begins. And that means an addition. And the knowledge of the Holy, who is the Holy Spirit, is understanding. So when I live in the fear of God, I must have a personal knowledge of how to relate with the Holy Spirit to operate in the wisdom of God. Because He knows all things. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout the better hallelujah. hallelujah. That's where many. It was the, it's the only spirit that told me how to deliver Nigeria from the economic crush. True? With all humility, what to bring Nigeria out? Of economic mess is in my hands. One solution I have, which I will share, will bring Nigeria out of every economic mess. You can't read it in Harvard. It's not found in school. It's time for the church to go beyond praying for praying for presidents to start providing solutions for presidents. It is when you come from wisdom. They don't have solution because when it comes to wisdom, you don't have competition. You know why every believer must go for wisdom? Check in your office, just have to wisdom. Nobody will compete with you again. Nobody can lobby you, nobody can blackmail you because you just stand like this. Every time the MD has problem, they say, Come. I know you're a clerk, but come. Last time that advice you gave me brought us out. What do you think we should do here? That's what Christians should be beg asking God for. I, what I own up. So I want to pray for you. He has many people who want to pray for him, including prayer matches. In fact, they even believe the prayer matches when they are not clean than you. Because you will tell them truth. So they like all those ones who will tell them, you see, with their long beard and dada, you see. <laughs> so, add to every that a word. Wisdom. You pray. He said, he that lacks wisdom, let him ask. James 1.5 
If any lack wisdom, let him ask. That acts of God that give it to all men liberally and operate it not. And it shall be given him. James was not saying, well, he, and that I just know that we have wisdom, but wisdom is in grace. Is it what? There's a wisdom you use to solve your children's problem. You may not solve husband and wife problem. Lord, I ask. He said, if any man is deficient, if any of you lack, look at the amplifier. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproach or fault finding, and it will be given him. God has no problem giving you. I use one year, one what? To ask for wisdom. Lord, I ask today that the wisdom of God in my life go to another level. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. The seat of wisdom. Put your hand there. I pray that the wisdom of God in me grow to another level. Leko sike tu praka seko tale kende bregezi akata. Eten keru geli gako kato bregezi. Eke koka koko koko saka kato bro 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 koko saka te. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. May this weekend be a weekend of solutions. Amen. May everything about your life speak the wisdom of God. Amen. Wherever you were despised in the past, be celebrated from now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of heaven that has given you this wisdom will announce you before this month is over. As you go back to your offices tomorrow, go back to your businesses tomorrow, wherever you go, you become a solution to someone's problems. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you are blessed. Amen. No evil befalls you. Amen. Peace as you go. Amen. In Jesus' name.